Hey everybody, it's Kevra. That's me, I'm Kevra, and this is my attractive friend Cole. Why am I your attractive friend Cole? Oh, wait, did you want like a nickname? Like no, a no, 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 why am I your attractive friend? Oh, uh, because you're attractive, dude. You got the beard, you got the dad bod. The dad bod? Yeah, I mean, I find it disgusting, but like the ladies love it. Now we've got a lot to talk about today because today's topic is discussing Nintendo's Summer Direct. As of this recording, they haven't officially announced anything, but since they usually have a Direct in June that ties in with E3, I think pretty much everyone is assuming it's going to be June considering the fact that we have Summer Game Fest, an Xbox presentation, and a State of Play all coming up. Now it could be that they don't do one or that they wait until July, but even though E3 has been canceled this year, I think a lot of us are still expecting a Nintendo Direct in June. Now, as far as what that Direct will entail, well, that's the whole reason for the video, you silly goose. <laughs> no, but like, seriously, that's the reason the video exists. Dude, dude because I... they get it. Keep going. I think the first thing that I want to talk about is Nintendo Switch Online plus Expansion Pack. Most recently, we had a leak about the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance emulators that should be running through Nintendo Switch Online. And when people saw this leak, a lot of people assumed that it would be coming out soon, maybe even announced at the next Nintendo Direct, but I don't think that's the case. So far, every single emulator that they've announced for the Nintendo Switch Online service has been announced in the fall. Now, because this is Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, I guess I could see them announcing the Game Boy at this next Direct for the basic Nintendo Switch Online membership, and then in the fall, announcing the Game Boy Advance for the expansion pack. But I really just don't think it's gonna happen. Cole, did you ever play the Game Boy? No, I didn't, but uh, did you ever play the Game Boy? Oh, I play lots of games with boys. Kevin, you're not gay. I could be gay. But you're straight. Technicality. Look, it's just it. It, I. It's wordplay. Let me have this. Okay. However, just because Game Boy and Game Boy Advance are probably not going to be talked about at this next direct, that doesn't mean that they won't bring up other systems. Kirby 64 was just released on the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, which means out of all the games that they showed us that were coming soon, there's only one game left: Pokemon Snap. That game will obviously come out in June, probably sometime around the Direct, maybe even Shadow Dropped on the day of the Direct. While it is fair to assume that they will not give us another list of Nintendo 64 titles that will be coming soon, considering the fact that they never did that for the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo, or even the Sega Genesis, which is also a part of the expansion pack, I feel like another list of games is coming specifically because of the fact that, unlike the basic Nintendo membership, there are no additional features that come with the expansion pack. The expansion pack is literally just the retro games and the DLC. I feel like most people bought that $20 basic membership for the online play, for the cloud saves, and then Nintendo and Super Nintendo were just added benefits. If you bought the expansion pack, you most likely bought it for the 64, maybe for the Genesis, maybe even for the DLC. And since the expansion pack has done really well, maybe Nintendo will choose not to show us what's coming. Instead, maybe they'll just surprise us every single month with a new title whenever they shadow drop it. But because the expansion pack more than doubles the original price, of the basic NSO membership, I feel like they know they have to show you what else is coming besides the promise of there's going to be N64 games but we're not going to tell you and we're giving you more Mario Kart 8 tracks but we're not going to tell you those either. Now considering the fact that they never gave us a list of Genesis games that would be coming soon, I don't think they'll do it for the Genesis, but I do think they're going to do it for the Nintendo 64. And I think it's either going to be a full 12 titles to show us what's coming up until the next Summer Direct or they're gonna show us eight titles to hold us over until the next February Direct. I guess it could just be three titles to hold us over until the September Direct, but that just seems very minuscule. So I really think they're gonna go with the larger title selection. Last time they gave us seven games, so eight seems like it would be the more reasonable number, but since I could see it potentially being 12 games, I'm going to select 12 games they could potentially pick. Now, according to the data mine last year, Nintendo has already picked out 38 games, which means these additional 12 will put us at 22, more than halfway there. Honestly, this doesn't surprise me too much because as I was going through and trying to pick different games, it kind of got hard. There were lots of great games on the Nintendo 64 that Nintendo doesn't actually own. 
And overall, the Nintendo 64 actually had a pretty small library. It also had a lot of racing games for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but like, there's quite a few picks on my list that are racing. So let's go ahead and start with the games that were developed by the company Rare. When they first announced the expansion pack, there was a lot of doubt whether or not Nintendo could actually bring GoldenEye over considering the fact that there are two other big companies that own a piece of that IP. But because of a leak that happened a few months ago where there are Xbox achievements that you can unlock for GoldenEye, it sounds like it's coming out soon. Actually, I know that there's a couple of people out there that were surprised that Nintendo chose the N64 emulator for last fall as opposed to the Game Boy Game Boy Advance. They had heard that the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance had already been done, but instead the Nintendo 64 emulator came out and it had lag input issues, it had fog effect issues. So there seemed to be confusion on why they chose the N64 emulator when it wasn't ready as opposed to the Game Boy emulator. And my personal theory is because they made a deal with Microsoft where they would be able to do a simultaneous release for GoldenEye. That's why I think they're going to announce that it's not only coming out, but it's going to come out either July or very shortly after. Of course, GoldenEye won't be the only game made by Rare that they're going to show off. I think Banjo-Tooie will also be announced. It might even come out in January, just like Banjo-Kazooie did, so it's kind of like a year-long anniversary. And then the last one would likely either be Donkey Kong 64 or Diddy Kong Racing. And because I feel like there's already a lot of racing on this list, and because they've already done F-Zero, they've already done Mario Kart 64, and because the big DLC for the expansion pack is Mario Kart 8 DLC, I feel like they're gonna go with Donkey Kong 64 and hold off on Diddy Kong Racing just a little while longer. I also believe that they will hold off on Perfect Dark because we're getting GoldenEye. And I also think that they're going to hold off on Perfect Dark because they're going to want it closer to the release of the brand new game that's going to be coming out who knows when. But when they finally release it on the expansion pack, it gets you super excited and you want to go out and buy an Xbox because you really want to play the new one. The other one that I think is eventually going to come, but I don't think it's going to come this time, is Blast Corps. Although I could see it getting substituted for Banjo-Tooie and then they'll just hold off on Banjo-Tooie, Perfect Dark, and Diddy Kong Racing until the next Summer Direct where Nintendo can finally say, okay, and so here are the other three rare games that we plan on giving you guys. Also, speaking of franchises that Nintendo doesn't completely own, next on our prediction list is Pokemon Stadium. You know, there was a lot of surprise when people saw that Pokemon Snap was coming to the N64 expansion pack because Nintendo technically only owns one third of Pokemon. But clearly deals have been made and I doubt that is the only Pokemon game we're getting. Especially since it now seems like we're gonna get the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance because you're probably gonna be able to connect Pokemon Stadium with your Pokemon games on the Game Boy and use certain Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium that you got in Pokemon Yellow, Blue, or Red thanks to the transfer pack. Now, Cole, do you actually know what a transfer pack is? Oh, yeah. You go to your local liquor store, grab a six-pack of beer. Sometimes those six-packs have little handles. You pick them up. Transfer pack. That is 100% correct. <laughs> Thanks. I'm kidding. That is wrong. What is the matter with you? That was me. So that's the Pokemon game that I feel like would release maybe later this summer, early fall, and then that way whenever they release the Game Boy emulator this fall, you'll instantly be able to use that transfer pack because day one for the Game Boy emulator, I'm assuming Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow are going to be there. However, I do think they'll also have a different Pokemon game come out maybe late winter, early spring. And that game is Pokemon Puzzle League. It's definitely the less exciting of the two Pokemon games, but it got a re-release on the Wii Virtual Console, so I feel like it's a very likely choice. So let's go ahead and get to the games that Nintendo actually owns, starting with an IP that I didn't actually know Nintendo owned up until very recently. And that IP is the Cruisin' Games. On the Nintendo 64, it was Cruisin' USA, Cruisin' World, and Cruisin' Exotica. My personal favorite, Cruisin' World, but considering Cruisin' USA came out first, I'm assuming that's gonna be the one they pick first. Now, the only reason I'm a little bit skeptical of this is because when the Cruisin' Blast game came out, the creator of Cruisin' Blast actually said that they wanted to go back and make that trilogy from the 64 era. So it could be technically possible that they're actually just remaking these games as opposed to putting them on the expansion pack, but I think it's more likely that they're just gonna put them on the expansion pack. 
And as I said earlier, there's a lot of different racing titles that I have on this list, so I'm gonna go ahead and list the next three, which are Wave Race, 1080 Snowboarding, and Excite Bike 64. You have to remember, the 90s were full of extreme sports, so you had snowboarding, you had people going on dirt bikes, and you had people racing on the ocean, I guess. Oh, and then of course there were the Tony Hawk games, but clearly that's not going on the service. Out of the three games I just listed, I feel like Excite Bike 64 might be the one that gets pushed back until the next time that they make a long list of Nintendo 64 games that will be coming soon. But because they're all a different type of racing, just like F-Zero is different than Mario Kart, I feel like you can kind of get away with giving us all these racing titles because at the end of the day, they all do feel very different. However, this next title, I absolutely guarantee it's coming. The original Super Smash Bros. game. I don't know why anyone would want to go back and play it on the 64, considering the fact that you already have all of those characters and all of those stages in a newer, upgraded version. But I guess nostalgia is a hell of a drug and people would have a lot of fun going back and replaying those old maps and those old characters that you can basically play on the updated version. And it's a big fan favorite series, so it just completely makes sense for them to do it. And then after you and your friends get done beating the crap out of each other, you can all relax by playing Pilot Wing 64, the original flight simulation game. Personally, I never actually played this one, but I actually have heard the soundtrack and there's a couple of songs on there that I actually really like. So that might actually get me to try it if it becomes available on the expansion pack. Now I just gave you 11 different Nintendo 64 games, which means there's only one left to pick and that game is none other than Mario Party 1. Now I know there's a lot of people out there who don't think it's coming specifically because of the fact that that's the game that opened Nintendo up to a bunch of lawsuits because of the whole joystick rubbing off the skin of your hand situation. But you gotta think about it this way. I can't rub off the skin of my hand with an N64 controller because I can't get one. <laughs> Old me. No. All joking aside, that lawsuit argument does have some validity to it. But at the same time, Nintendo just brought back Tug of War and Mario Party Superstars. So I can easily see them throwing up a warning prompt either at the beginning of the game or at the loading screen of each minigame that has that feature. Also, when you look at the data mine list of N64 games, Mario Party 1 through 3 clearly fits between Mario Kart 64 and Mario Tennis. So unless Nintendo just changes their mind, or it turns out that one of those slots is actually Mario Story because that's what Paper Mario is called in Japan. It seems likely that Mario Party 1 is going to be coming to Nintendo 64 online expansion pack. Of course, there is one other thing I want to talk about that is kind of Nintendo 64 related, but it doesn't have to do with the games. And I kind of think this is no longer a valid prediction that I have, but there's still a tiny part of me that hopes it's true. So I'm just gonna go over it really quick. When the expansion pack released with all the N64 games, they also released the Nintendo 64 controller. It was available very briefly and then instantly sold out. And then a few weeks later, it was available again and then instantly sold out again. That was back in November. And with each passing month, I kept thinking, where are the N64 controllers? Why are they not going back in stock? At first, people told me it was because of Chinese New Year, because production usually slows down around that time, and that's why they hadn't come back in stock yet. But to me, it felt like it was taking way too long, especially by the time we got to May. Six whole months had passed, and the Nintendo 64 controllers had still not gotten restocked. So my personal theory was that because of Nintendo seeing how well the Nintendo 64 controllers were doing, and because of the fact that one of the big selling points of the Nintendo 64 controller was it coming in different colors, I was starting to believe that they weren't just making gray Nintendo 64 controllers, but actually making a variety of colors for people to get. And they were saving this big announcement for a direct because they knew that so many people would be so hyped about this announcement. Especially since the controller that we got is the gray controller, and I feel like no one really especially loved the gray controller. I mean, no one was like, I want the gray controller. No, I want the gray controller. No, I want the gray no, controller. I want the gray no, controller. I want the gray controller. Kevin, I want the gray controller. No, I want the Kevin, gray give controller. me the gray controller now. I'm gonna put you into the ground. Oh, you wanted the gray controller. Uh, See, I thought that uh, you were you you wanted the the the, the gay controller. Why do you want the gay controller? It's it's Gay Pride Month, and I want to show my support.
for the the, the, the gays. Mm. The, the, I have lots of gay friends. And the, are you buying this at all? No. Can I get a head start and running? Yeah, you can go. Ahead. Okay, cool. <laughs> However, as I was recording this video, they literally put the Nintendo 64 controllers back in stock. And again, it sold out in just about an hour. Now you figured that even accounting with Chinese New Year's and manufacturing slowing down, that they would have had more controllers to sell this time around, but somehow they instantly sold out within an hour again. So there is a piece of me that hopes that maybe the reason that it once again sold out so quickly is because this was just a very small supply of gray controllers. And at the next direct, they're gonna announce a variety of controllers and they're gonna take, you know, five or six hours to sell out. Or it could just be the fact that it's a really popular controller right now and there's, you know, limited supplies. We're, we keep hearing about the chip shortage supplies and that's what's delaying people from getting new systems. So maybe that's part of the reason why they are so hard to come by. But I'm still hoping that they do colors because that would be so awesome. All right, now we're done with the 64 talk mostly, but I am going to still talk about the expansion pack because as we all know, the expansion pack is not simply about retro games. It's also about DLC. It started off with Animal Crossing, which a lot of people seemed really disappointed about. Then they added Mario Kart 8 tracks, which people seemed to absolutely love. We just got Splatoon 2 added, and I don't think it's gonna stop there. In fact, if you're very familiar with my channel, I, you know what I think is coming, but before we get to that, let's talk about some of the other options. For example, a lot of people thought Pokemon Legends Arceus was gonna get DLC, but I think most of us assume now that it won't get DLC simply because of the fact that we have brand new Pokemon games coming out this November. We could see one more free update just like we saw a few months ago, but even that I feel is a little bit unlikely at this point. And speaking of free updates, we already know that Switch Sports is going to be getting free updates. Now, whether or not they also do DLC later is still up in the air, but it really feels like they're gonna continue the route of doing free updates to support this game. And even if they do DLC for it, I feel like it's not coming until a lot later, considering the fact that they already said that golf isn't coming until autumn. So originally, I was going to say that I think we're gonna get free updates from Mario Strikers, but they already announced it while I was editing this video. So I'm guessing that they're just gonna show us the content then. So that only leaves one of two games that could be getting DLC announced here at this next Direct. One would be Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which I do think has potential. But considering the DLC for the expansion pack seems to have a focus on multiplayer games, that really only leaves one option open. And that option is Fighters Pass 3 for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm kidding! Like, the, clearly the answer I was going with was Mario Party Superstars DLC. Like, if you watch my videos, you know Mario Party Superstars DLC. That's, that's, that's what I've been saying. That's, uh, you know, you guys know. You know. They know. They know. They know. Now, the whole reason I launched this channel was to talk about Mario Party Superstars needing DLC. I have literally been an advocate for it since before the game came out, because when the game initially came out, I was pissed off that they only picked five boards out of the 20 N64 boards, especially considering the fact that there's a ton of boards from the N64 era that I think are actually better than the ones that they picked for superstars. So I've had a lot of thoughts on this. I've talked about it in several different videos and because I think that it's either gonna happen now or it's not gonna happen at all, I'm gonna talk about it once again very briefly though. Now I will say that if they do not announce Mario Party 1 for the expansion pack and they also do not announce DLC for Mario Party Superstars, I will be sitting there wondering if maybe DLC is still getting worked on because that's the only reason I can see them not announcing a Mario Party 64 game for the expansion pack. They're working on the DLC, so they don't want to put the old games on there for free, but if they put Mario Party 1 or even Mario Party 2 on the expansion pack and don't announce DLC, for me, that puts the nail in the coffin and Nintendo clearly just does not know how to handle their legacy content and it just drives me nuts. Or it means they're done with the 64 era and we're just gonna get five GameCube boards and then they're gonna move on to the Wii era and so basically we're only getting one or two boards from each game and I think I have vocalized very hard how I feel about that. How do I feel about it, Cole? Yeah, you hate it. That's right, I hate it. You see, they screwed us over for the 64 generation, giving us only five boards, one of which was only from Mario Party 3. We didn't get Waluigi's Island, we didn't get Bowserland, we didn't get Westerland, we didn't get Mario's Rainbow Castle. 
They screwed us. And I guarantee they will screw us again for the GameCube generation and they'll do it again for the Wii generation. It's just like, I, I can't take getting bit over and screwed in the ass over and over and over again. I can just constantly feel Nintendo screwing me back there. I think you might be gay. That, no, mm, I see what you did, but no. But I actually do have hope that they are gonna give us Mario Party Superstars DLC and that they are going to announce it at this Direct and I wanna go over how they might do it. Now they're probably gonna go with a party pass where it's one board every few months and it's this slow drip of content just kinda like how they're doing with Mario Kart 8 DLC. But I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping that they go with my original thought process of doing basically five DLC packs with three boards each, and then they charge like 25 to 30 bucks, and then they drop this 25 to 30 dollar package in the expansion pack every four or five months. That way we get a substantial amount of content all at once, as opposed to just one board and some mini games. Also, in my videos, I mostly talked about 64 boards being the only boards that we get for Mario Party Superstars DLC, but I could also technically see them adding Mario Party 4 because it's so much similar to Mario Party 1 through 3. It's really 5 through 7 that are so different. The only issue I have with that is what are they going to do about Mario Party 8? Are they just going to remake that entire game? Or will they include it with Mario Party 5 through 7 and change the item mechanic into the capsule slash orb mechanic? And I have to admit, the other reason that I'm thinking about Mario Party 4 boards becoming a part of this DLC pack or party pass that they're doing is because of the fact in my last video, I talked about them doing two boards per wave and it just seemed a little off because seven waves seemed like a lot of content, but on the other hand, dividing it into two party passes where one has four waves and the other one has three waves just seemed a little bit weird. But if you add in the Mario Party 4 boards, that's three extra waves with two boards each, which equals 10 waves, which means you could do two different party passes with five waves each, each wave having two boards. And as someone who thinks that just getting one board per wave is really lame, but also really thinks that they're gonna go the route of the party pass and just give us some more boards every few months. I think this is the most likely option if they do a party pass with more than one board per wave. But that's it, I'm not gonna talk about Mario Party anymore. I've talked about it enough on this channel, so we're moving on. And what we're moving on to is the Mario movie. So I'm not gonna lie, last summer I actually predicted before E3 that we were gonna get a Super Mario Brothers movie trailer at E3. And I saw a lot of people be like, no, that, that's stupid. Like this, this, is, this is a video game thing. This isn't about movies. And I was kind of right, kind of wrong. I mean, I predicted it one direct too early. And there was also the fact that it wasn't actually a trailer. It was just a cast announcement for the movie. Now, originally I thought they were going to show a trailer here because of the fact that it's coming out in December and that lines up perfectly when you show the first movie trailer because it's about six months out. Out. But they just announced that it got pushed back until spring, so now I'm feeling like it's a little bit less likely. I mean, if they do show anything, it'll be a very, very brief teaser. We might see what the characters look like with illumination animation. Ha! <laughs> that rhymed. People really watch your videos? Sometimes. Maybe we'll even get to hear what the voices sound like. Maybe it's something as simple as a release date. I know I'm personally hoping for a full trailer, but I don't think it's going to happen, but who knows, we'll, we'll see. Speaking of release dates, there's a lot of games that have been announced that don't have release dates yet. So I wanna go over the long list of previously announced games, most of which don't have release dates, but let's go ahead and start with the ones that do actually have release dates. Now, I already talked about Mario Strikers Battle League, and the fact that they just released a bunch of new trailers makes me feel like we're not gonna see too much more at the next Direct. And if we do, again, it'll be an announcement of free DLC is coming, and they'll show us, you know, what they're currently working on. Then we have Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, and this will be the final push to remind us, hey, this game is coming out really soon, guys. 
They'll show off Splatoon 3 and finally show people the single player mode that people have been wondering about. And now we get to the interesting stuff. The stuff that we don't know specifically when it's coming out. Although I will talk about the one game that we basically know when it's coming out. And that's Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. These games are very likely coming out in November. I don't think anyone really thinks that they're coming out in any different month. Especially with the late 2022 announcement. And Pokemon is easily one of the best selling franchises that Nintendo has. Or at least partially has. And while it's possible that we get a specific release date and a little bit more footage in this next Direct, I feel like once again they will save it for a Pokemon Direct because that seems what they typically do these days. So let's focus on the titles that they will likely talk about. First up, Bayonetta 3. It was announced last year that it's coming out in 2022, and there's still a few months left of 2022 that no Nintendo title has been announced for yet. These months are August, October, and December. Now, December specifically is one that may or may not happen. If there usually is a title there, it's almost always that first week of December. And I think that's a very realistic possibility for Bayonetta 3. That or October because I feel like it has that Halloween vibe to it. Although another title that kind of fits the Halloween vibe that people keep thinking is going to be in the next direct, either indie or a big direct, is Silk Song. Now although this game was never announced for 2022, it was announced three years ago. And while I'm sure COVID did impact it because it's an indie developer with more limited resources, this game feels like it absolutely should be coming out either this year or maybe even next year. And I feel like if they do it this year, October is a perfect slot for it. Now as far as August goes, I feel like the perfect title for that one is Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. The first Mario and Rabbids came out in August and I feel like that would just be a nice little touch if this one also comes out in August. But I also feel like that game was a bigger game than they expected it to be, so it might get moved back a little bit closer so it's a holiday title. And if that's the case, I feel like the other title that would fit perfectly for August is Advanced Wars, simply because of the fact that it's already been talked a lot about in the previous direct, so I feel like when they announce it, they'll just want to go ahead and get it out there as soon as possible. So announcing it in June and being like, it's coming out in two more months makes way more sense than saying it's coming out December or October or something like that. Then again, maybe that game isn't coming out this year. Maybe they're going to wait at least until 2023 before they feel comfortable enough releasing that game. Now, the last game that I want to talk about that has been previously announced but has no release date yet is Breath of the Wild 2, which I do not think they are going to talk about in this direct. They just announced that it was being pushed back until spring 2023, so I feel like talking about it in this next direct, it's kind of weird because we're still so far off from actually getting the game, so I feel like they'll wait until the fall direct. I mean, I guess I could see them bringing it up and giving us just a little bit of a taste of something, but not an actual like full length trailer, maybe just a, hey, we're still working on it, sorry about the delay, the title is gonna be blah blah blah, or the specific release date is this and we get like, you know, 10 to 20 more seconds of footage. But I'm just kind of assuming that we're not even going to get that. And I also kind of wonder if the reason that they announced that it was getting delayed just a month or so ago, instead of waiting for this direct, is because they have an announcement of something else getting delayed, which would probably either be Sparks of Hope or Bayonetta 3. That way they're only announcing one thing being delayed, as opposed to a couple of things, which I feel like looks a little bit worse whenever you lump them together. On the other hand, maybe nothing else gets delayed and they just wanted to go ahead and get the bad news out of the way, that way whenever the next direct comes out, it's all good news. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call good PR. Do you even know what PR means? Pretty rad. You were beaten as a child, weren't you? Oh yeah, all the time. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I got my ass beat at Mario Golf. Uh, let's see. Um, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, really any first person shooter. What do you ask? Now, of course, those are all the big games that have been previously announced. I know there's other titles that they'll talk about that have been previously talked about, mostly indie games and smaller projects. And those types of games will most likely be in like a sizzle reel. But then there's the big games that have not been announced yet. The big surprises that everyone goes, oh, what was that noise? That was, that was the noise of excitement. Like when you get excited about stuff and things coming. In. Are you sure you weren't physically beaten as a child? As a child? No, as an adult. I mean, I've been told I have a very punchable face. I got my ass beat a lot. Actually, just the other day, uh, I got my ass beat because I took some dude's gray controller. Now again, some of these announcements aren't going to be that big of a deal. 
Like, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people who actually really love the announcements, but it's more of a niche title, probably from a third party developer. Like, it never fails that when I'm watching a direct, they announce something like Banana Hammock Slingshot 3, and I'm going, I didn't even know there's a Banana Hammock Slingshot 1 and 2. I did. Are you trying to make me look bad on my own channel? Yes. Some of these will likely be remakes or remasters from Nintendo's library that are more low profile or even just ports of games that have been on other systems. And these games are typically way too difficult to predict. Like, I don't think anyone was expecting Portals to get announced at the previous Direct or a Monkey Ball collection to get announced last year. Heck, one of these announcements might even really surprise us to hear it was even possible they put this game on the Switch and then at the very end they reveal it's streaming and we go, Ah, oh, there it is. There's the catch. Yeah, you can take your streaming only Kingdom Hearts and shove it up. So let's go ahead and talk about those possible big announcements that could be coming that everyone's gonna be talking about after the direct airs. But first, let's go ahead and get out of the way the stuff that's probably not going to get announced. Starting with Mario Kart 9. For the last couple of years, I have been watching people consistently say Mario Kart 9 is going to be at the next direct, and I think this will be the first direct where no one actually predicts it because of the fact that we got Mario Kart 8 DLC coming. Like, there's no way they're doing Mario Kart 9 along with Mario Kart 8 DLC coming out for the next year and a half. We just got a new Kirby game, so I really doubt it's gonna be a new Kirby game, unless of course they do something that's more of a spin-off, like the Kirby Air Ride games or something. Next Level Games is giving us Mario Strikers next month, so I feel like we should absolutely not expect a Luigi's Mansion 4. Also because of Mario Strikers, I feel like we should not expect another Mario sports game. In fact, I'm really debating on whether or not we'll get another Mario game this year because Sparks of Hope is technically a Mario game, but it was also made by Ubisoft, so maybe Nintendo is thinking, well, that doesn't really count. I mean, Super Mario Odyssey only came out a few months after Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, so I feel like they could still fit one in there, but at the same time, I feel like that Rabbids game sold more than Nintendo thought it would. Now, I think everyone's first thought on this is that it's gonna be Super Mario Odyssey 2 or maybe even a brand new Super Mario 3D game. And while I personally hope that's exactly what it is, I feel like it's not that big of a title. If Breath of the Wild 2 was originally their big holiday title, I can't imagine that Super Mario Odyssey 2 or whatever the game is, was going to come out so closely to Breath of the Wild 2. So I feel like it would be a smaller Mario title, like a 2D Mario or a 3D World type of a situation. I know Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury came out last year, but at the same time, that was just a port. The last brand new game in that style was almost nine years ago. And that exact same thing applies to a 2D Mario game, unless of course you count Super Mario Maker, which might have actually replaced the traditional 2D Mario game style. But I feel like they have to return to it at some point because Super Mario Maker isn't exactly for everyone. I myself didn't even get the first game on the Wii U because I just figured, oh, well, I don't want to create levels or play levels that people created. That's kind of meh. Then I bought the second one and spent literally over 200 hours in that game. As far as an actual 3D Mario game goes, we haven't gotten one in almost five years, but at the same time, we did get a collection of ports just a year and a half ago, so maybe because of the ports we've gotten over the last few years, we shouldn't expect a new Mario game. At least not this year. However, something that people are absolutely expecting is a Zelda title. Mostly the Wind Waker slash Twilight Princess dual pack. It's kind of weird since, you know, people have kind of been expecting this for years now, and it keeps getting rumored and leaked that it's coming and then it doesn't come. But this year, I actually think there's some merit to it for two particular reasons. The first reason is because we have gotten a new Zelda game every single year since 2012. And with Breath of the Wild 2 not coming out this year, I feel like another Zelda game coming out is kind of likely. And the Wii U ports, make the most sense because they're the easiest to do. So if they realize that Breath of the Wild was going to get delayed into 2023, creating these ports and releasing it later this year seems like a good backup plan. 
Then again, who's to say it's not a different type of Zelda game like a remake from Grezzo, or something more akin to the Hyrule Warriors games or Cadence of Hyrule. But the big reason that I'm leaning towards a Wii U port of one of the Zelda games is because this December is the 20th anniversary of Wind Waker. And I have been saying for the last couple of years that I think that they're going to re-release it on the 20th anniversary. And I've also been saying that I think they'll do the exact same with Twilight Princess, meaning that we won't see a port of that game until 2026. Like, both of these games came out on their 10th anniversary. Skyward Sword just came out on its 10th anniversary, so I feel like coming out again on their 20th anniversaries just makes so much sense. Then again, when it comes to a lot of these games that were ported to the Switch, it feels like it wasn't just the base game. It does feel like a lot of the Wii U ports had something extra that made it look like it wasn't just a port, but there was an added value there. Mario Kart 8 had the DLC packaged with it. Super Mario 3D World had Bowser's Fury come along with it. New Super Mario Bros. U and New Super Luigi U came packaged together. And the other thing is, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess didn't exactly sell too well on the Wii U. Wind Waker HD only sold 2.3 million copies on the Wii U, and Twilight Princess only sold half as many copies as Wind Waker HD did. So I guess I could see these two games being packaged together just to make sure they sell well, but at the same time, I feel like with the way Nintendo values their IPs, it makes it a little bit harder for me to believe, but who knows, maybe. Speaking of remakes, according to a source that I actually believe, Metroid Prime has been remade and it's been done for a while. The problem is, the people who remade it were actually going to remake the whole trilogy, but then they got called on to do Metroid Prime 4 instead. Now, maybe they hired another team to finish off the trilogy? Or with the popularity of Dread, maybe Nintendo decides to just re-release the first one by itself. Especially if Metroid Prime 4 is almost done, so they want to go ahead and re-release that first game to help transition newcomers to the story. I mean, technically, maybe it's Metroid Prime 4 that gets announced here and it's going to be coming in late 2022, but I feel like if it gets announced, it's going to have a 2023 release date. And the other thing is, we just got a Metroid game. But you know what game series has not gotten a new entry in a while? A new Donkey Kong game. It's been eight years since we've gotten a new one and four years since we've gotten the Tropical Freeze port. Now, last year, there were rumors going around that there was a Donkey Kong game being made, but those exact same people were saying that it was going to be presented at E3 last year, and that wasn't a thing. However, those rumors did address something that I found very interesting, which is that it was kind of a 2D, 3D hybrid, same as Kirby in the Forgotten Land or Super Mario 3D World. And I could actually really see that being a thing, because they haven't made a real 3D Donkey Kong since the 64. And even though I personally really love that game, it got a lot of hate for how much collecting you had to do. So maybe if they're too scared to go full on 3D again, they do something like a Kirby in the Forgotten Land, where it's a fixed camera, but it's still technically 3D, but it's still not an open world game or even a sandbox game. We're also due for a brand new Star Fox game. It's been six years since we've gotten a new Star Fox game, and we haven't gotten a single port on the Wii U, aside from the ones on Nintendo Switch Online. However, Star Fox is one of those games that's never sold too incredibly well, and it seems like sales have just gotten worse and worse ever since the N64 era where the franchise seems to have peaked selling 4 million units for Star Fox 64. But at the same time, that 4 million is more impressive than anything Metroid has done so far. And that Star Fox 64 game is currently on the Switch, so who knows, maybe now is the perfect time for Star Fox to regain its glory days and sell just as well as those first two Star Fox games. Of course, there's one other well-known franchise that Nintendo owns that also isn't a big seller, but it hasn't gotten a new entry in nine years. And with the fact that Pikmin has gotten a new mobile game and the Switch got a ported version of Pikmin 3 just a couple years ago, it seems like Nintendo is prepping for the eventual release of Pikmin 4. Of course, the biggest announcement to come out of this Direct might not even be a game. Every year, people are always speculating about a new kind of Switch that will be coming out. Heck, I'm pretty sure before the Switch even came out, there were rumors of a Switch 4K, or a Switch Pro, or whatever you want to call it. There's been rumors that a brand new console is going to take over for the Switch. And ever since the OLED Switch came out, people have been speculating about when the OLED Switch Lite will eventually come out. Now, I know there's a lot of people who have been doubting Nintendo when they say that they're only halfway through the Switch's life cycle. They claim Nintendo is simply lying just because of the fact that if they announce new hardware, no one's going to buy the current hardware. Or halfway through the Switch's life cycle means there's a Switch 2 coming out this year, but for six 
more years after this, they're still going to continue to support the Switch even though the Switch 2 is going to be their main focus. Personally, I don't subscribe to either one of those theories. I also feel like they'll wait at least another year before they release a Switch OLED Lite. The OLED Switch was really just an upgrade for those that play in handheld. So I feel like it's a bad business strategy to try to get those same people to buy another Switch this year. So to me, the Switch 4K or the Switch Pro or whatever you want to call it, that seems like the most likely option. It's not a successor to the Switch, it's just a more powerful version. Basically the equivalent to the new 3DS. It was basically the exact same hardware, just performed a bit better. And considering that Bloomberg article seemed pretty legitimate considering the fact that he was name dropping some of the studios he got his intel from, and the fact that Nintendo actually responded to it and seemed very angry about it, I absolutely think it's coming. The only thing is, I wonder if the chip shortage has delayed it, which means we're not getting it this fall like we got the Switch Lite or the Switch OLED. So if that's the case, then we're not going to get any hardware announcement and even if they are prepared to release it this fall maybe it still doesn't pop up in this direct simply because they're going to wait a few weeks afterwards just like they did with the oled switch they had the big nintendo e3 direct and then a couple weeks later they unveiled the oled switch and that's what i'm kind of leaning towards like if they put it in the direct i wouldn't be surprised but to me it makes more sense for them to have a direct that's all about games and then a couple weeks later they announce new hardware Anyway, that's going to do it for my longest video so far, but these are just my predictions. Tell me what your predictions are down in the comments below. What else do they need to do? They need to like, dislike, and subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you later.